Hey guys, I'm Kim. Today I'm back at my sister-in-law's house and actually she's turned into a farm recently. There's a lot of animals here, but I wanted to give you an update on their garden and what's going on in it. And also I want to give you five tips to start gardening if you haven't already. So first off, I see they've already got their arch made from vines that they harvested from the woods, which is pretty awesome. And there you have some morning glories that they're going to have vine over this to make it really, really pretty and pop. Let's go on in. Isn't it gorgeous? Everything's so lush. The first thing I want to talk about is, I think the most important thing is soil. You gotta make sure you have the best soil you can possibly get, or if you're using the soil in the ground, you might need to amend it. So get a soil test uh, to make sure you have really good soil. I made the mistake last year. We started a Back to Eden garden, and the soil was really, really black and beautiful. And I was like, okay, we have, we have great soil. It was not the case. So if you're starting out, uh, you want to get a nice garden soil. I have topsoil. Get some compost and manure in there. So any kind of compost that you can add the nutrients into that would be great. Kelly, my sister-in-law, I'm Wade, my brother-in-law here. They have all these animals, right? They have goats now, chickens and guineas, and they're gonna. I think they're gonna get rabbits. Uh, but all of those, you know, poops combined are like an awesome food for your garden, which in turn feeds you. So let's look at what they have here. So right here they have a, a bunch of lettuces. It looks like they might have, uh, I think I was told these are nasturtiums, uh, romaine, which looks beautiful. Now notice that it is in the shade. So you can grow a lot of crops in the sun. I mean, mo most of them actually prefer it. But you can also do some shade varieties as well. So that is my second tip too before you even start gardening before you even like dig the first little hole think about and watch your sun where is this garden going to go so if the sun never hits the ground it's probably not a great place to actually do gardens because squashes and pumpkins and a lot of vining plants need a lot of sun but you can grow some things in the shade hence the lettuce which is actually great for summer times you can get away with some lettuce in the summer you can actually do sweet potatoes in the shade. You're not gonna get as big a crop, but you can eat their leaves, which they're fine in the shade. Uh, so let's move on right here. Another thing that likes shade, and you can't see any right now, are some mushrooms. We're, they're doing some mushrooms in here. Great food, uh, actually could be a staple food for you. And um, I think these might be some lettuces. Oh yeah, there's a little tag there that says romaine. So they're gonna have some more romaine. They have their yarrow, which the love bugs absolutely love. I don't know what those are. Is those viol are those violas? I don't know. They have some flowers mixed in. Peas and beans. And then they have some squashes right here. So it's really important too uh, when you're you're actually starting to plant that you try and companion plant. Don't plant carrots with potatoes. I don't I think that's one of them they don't like each other. So you might need to Google some of that stuff to know who likes to be planted together. Also, you want to plant some flowers in there too, because some flowers help and they're beneficial to your food so that they keep the bad bugs away. So moving on, we got a bunch of strawberries. Oh my gosh, Riley, look at this one. Aren't they gorgeous? So huge and lush. Got some marigolds and tomatoes. And this lavender is going to town, holy cow. Uh, their their uh, onions are going to seed. That's another, guys, another thing that you need to be doing is if something goes to seed, don't just get rid of it. Let it do its thing, let it dry, and then harvest those seeds for next year. Potatoes. Now, I want you to notice, this is not dark. And you would think, oh, I can't grow in that, but do you see these things? This is great dirt because of the guineas. You don't have to let their poop like sit for six months or anything. You put it right in the bed and it's golden. A ton of peppers. Look at all these peppers. And this is a new bed uh, that they didn't have last time I did the tour. So they've been working, adding more beds. They got a little more room to add more. More peppers right here. That's another new bed. That was their pepper thing before. What's going here? Not really sure. Oh, it looks like lettuces. The tunnel, I love the tunnel. So they have some squashes and zucchinis and cucumbers that are gonna go up and up and over on these. 
That's exciting. We've talked about um, your soul and your sunlight, right? So when you go to create your beds, what kind of method do you want to use? Do you want to use back to Eden method where you put wood chips on the ground? Now we messed up. We put the chips on, didn't let them sit, and the nitrogen like was taken out of our soil and we didn't have much produce. So don't do that. Let it sit for at least six months. So you can plant right in the soil with that method or just right in the dirt, but amend your soil so that you have a good crop. I just prefer raised beds, that's what I do. And raised beds don't have to be wood. They can be, uh, they can be cement blocks. They can be uh, this kind of system right here with the metal. Uh, it can be whatever you can get your hands on. Um, just make sure it doesn't have a bunch of chemicals leaching out. You don't want to eat that either. Then we also, I want to talk to you about irrigation. How are you going to water your stuff? Okay. Is it going to be a sprinkler? Is it going to be you? Um, is it going to be a drip line, a drip system of some sort? Don't water too often and don't water too much. My potatoes, I'll be doing a tour in my house pretty soon. You'll see my potatoes aren't looking that great because I didn't realize that I've been watering them too often. I was doing it once a day because it got hot, right? And the top, because I don't have mulch on top of mine at the moment, um, it got dried out looking. I was like, I need to water this. Well, they're all yellow and really sad looking and then I'm, I hope I didn't mess them up. But when you dig down deeper, they're, they're moist. So uh, everything takes a different water level and that's just something you have to learn. I mean, I'm still learning. Let's come look at this other stuff. Oh, excuse me, a little plant there. So we got, it looks like we have eggplant here and it looks really happy and a bunch of sunflowers. Very, very nice. And then over here we have some more peas tomato, squashes. So the idea here is they want them to climb up and over and they're going to sling them with some pantyhose or, or you know material of some sort so that they have a ton of squash. Oh, there's one right here. Look at all these beautiful squash. Oh my goodness. I mean, I can't wait to see some in my garden. What I to talk about is bug pressure. Uh, if you want to keep it organic, the best things that I have learned are use flowers, interspersed through flowers. Uh, Google those, find out what you need. I know Nasturtium's one, uh, obviously. Oh, the little ones, marigolds are really good. Um, but there are tons more. Basil is good, would go with tomatoes, all that kind of stuff. But I also use neem oil and I use diatomaceous earth. Now be careful with those because you don't want to kill your pollinators. So you want to do that late at night. And with diatomaceous earth, that is my, like my last resort because it doesn't go away until it rains and you have to reapply. They also have uh, this cute lettuce. And lettuce is really cool because uh, it's a cut and come again. You don't have to pull this whole thing out of the root. That would be silly. So what you want to do is you want to cut it at the base and it will grow within the next two or three days. And you'll just continue to have a harvest of lettuce. Another cool fact too with bell pepper, and I don't know if it's all bell pepper, but I, I learned that bell pepper is actually perennial in my region. Maybe not in yours, but if you cover it when it's uh, before a frost, it will just continue to grow and it'll be there to provide for you and you don't have to start from seed again or from a plant start. Uh, is this asparagus? Is that what it says? Yeah, it looks like they're starting asparagus. And asparagus, I, I want to start too because it takes like three years before you can actually harvest your asparagus, which is quite annoying. I have marigolds interplanted with, what is this? Looks like collards. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't really know what this is. Anyway, then we got nothing. The tomatoes, a baby tomato. They got a ton of tomatoes. More tomatoes. And then they have some radishes in here. Look, they actually cut the tops of the, this because they couldn't see them. The canopy was so thick. But look at that radish. Oh, they're gorgeous. This one's actually pulled up. I wonder if they knew that. Yikes. Hill that in for them. Um, and then they have some Swiss chard, some carrots, some nasturtiums. Look how that pretty flower. Then some more radishes. That one is humongous. It's pretty. What is this? Rutabaga? I think it's rutabaga. And then some more uh, carrots. And they really interplant theirs. I need to work with my interplanting game. I, in my head, logically, I'm like, I want it all one thing so that I know where things are and I like the um, balance of that. But really, if you're planting a garden, it kind of needs to be like a food forest. Everything just kind of mixed in 
and that helps with your pest as well. The harvest is actually the last thing. So things are gonna be needed to be harvested at different times. So you need to be prepared and ready. Like, how are you gonna do that? Are you just gonna eat it straight from the garden? Are you gonna freeze dry it? Are you going to dehydrate it? Are you going to uh, can it? So make sure all that's in order when you're ready to harvest so that nothing goes bad in your garden, right? We really don't want to let anything rot that we've worked so hard to grow. So those are my, actually that's six tips. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six tips, guys. So I hope that helped you. Um, anybody can garden. You just have to have the motivation and the drive and the will. And what better year to get started to garden than this year right here. I hope this inspired you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.